Well, yeah, COVID did, did ruin the whole Christmas, actually, because the panto closed early. We actually had to close on Christmas Eve, because yeah. in London, the variant of COVID had just gone through the roof. So, yeah, we got shut down, sadly. But also, you know, you know sadly, the part of the joy of Panto is the large cast that's there and it fills the stage and unfortunately because of restrictions we couldn't have any of the the, the dancers that usually Panto has and the, the, the size of the cast that Panto usually has so it was small it was personable we did what we could with the tools that we had and uh, you know it was such a shame it just had to stop so soon Absolutely. but this year all back to normal Now, I'm very, very happy to be here. Uh, pleasured. We've been, we've been in conversations with each other for many years, and through one reason or another, we haven't actually nailed down a panto. So then we got in touch again this year, and they said, Wimbledon? We said, yes. And it was simple as that, you know, and we really respect them, all of their pantos are driven by a wonderful array of talent uh, on, on the stage, and so to be included in that is a great honour. So it's the classic story uh, of Snow White, played by Hannah Lauver, who is uh, West End trained. TikTok uh, sensation. But also a TikTok sensation from Tesco's. Uh, she is absolutely wonderful and she, again, she's a proper entertainer. She can do the business. Yeah, we are Dick and Dom again, because that's who we are, Dick and Dom. <laughs> it, it's, funny, it's, it's a funny thing to do when you're so well grounded as character names, even though in real life we're Rich and Dominic. Um, when you come on stage, if we were called Bill and Robert, people would be like, but it's Dick and Dom. <laughs> and so uh, we're kind of like a victim of our own success. So we will Absolutely. be us. Oh, Anton Deck. Yeah, oh, they'll be in a jungle somewhere. Do you know what? <laughs> I think an audience would be disappointed if we yes. didn't do both. It's got to be in there, and it will be in there. We haven't worked out how yet, but we, you know, we've had a meeting with the director, Jonathan Carley, and we're just trying to work out how to slip in our own material here and there. You'll hear it at some point. Yeah, I think, I think to have a name like that, telling you where to go, what to do, how to speak, and where to stand, yeah. and you can't go wrong. Big budget? Where do you get that from? <laughs> the first we've heard about that's yeah. the our agent. <laughs> no, no, you are absolutely right. They yeah. pulled out all the stuff for this one. Stellar cast, stellar cast for this one. You know, uh, West End royalty. We are working with. You are, yeah. yeah. Ruthie Henshaw. Ruthie Henshaw. I mean. Thank you very much. Cheers. Remember, noise is off, sardines. Darling. I take the sardines, so I leave oh, the sardines. Oh, yes. I take the phone and I leave the sardines. You remember? Of Kenton course, it's, I remember it all now, yeah, sardines. But you have to drill it. If you don't drill it, oh, absolutely. And that, to that get those two seen. plays working yeah. at the same time, yeah. the dumb shirt at the front and the actual play at the back. Yeah. It's very difficult. I did a lot of research for that, darling. I know I'm becoming like Selson, really. <laughs> well, obviously, I'm playing Nelly Night Nurse, that very famous character who looks after Snow White, only clearly not very well. The poor thing gets poisoned. No thanks to me. <laughs> yes, Nelly Nights. No, I'm classically trained. I shall be there with a massive rack. Are you missing Matt? My son is the favourite person to work with in Panto. We play sisters as twins because we are identical. You are. But he has now gone into a Moulin Rouge playing Ziedler and I will be at the Phoenix in Noises Off and we'll be in the West End for the first time ever at the same time. Ernst and Musical Theatre and the president of and have been for 25 years ever since it was the Ernst Operatic and I was in it in 1963 as Louis in The King and I and I was in several productions and I always wanted to be their president and I want to be their longest serving president and that's my aim and I've done it already. 
but they're trying to get their own theatre. Now, they were going to try and buy um, a church, an old uh, Baptist church, but they got scuppered by a housing development, you know, because they didn't have the money. So now they're, um, they're going to build their own. They're going to build their own theatre. So all the money that they raised for, for buying the chapel, which would have cost them square billions, they're going to put into building a, what will be a bigger theatre and what will be their own. Isn't that marvellous? Where I know, where they can do pantos, like Snow White. Do you think I'll go home and give my Nelly Night nurse there? Absolutely. <laughs> you say that to all the boys. <laughs> now, before we go, is there anything you want to know about Snow White and the Seven Drops that Wimbledon Theatre between December the 3rd and December the 31st? I think, I think it's something you can either do or you can't do. I mean, my Uncle Norman was very good at it, at, at the Congregational uh, Pantomime. And, um, and there was a man called Ivor Brown, who was the father of a mate of mine at school called David. He was a wonderful dame. I saw fantastic amateur dames. I mean, all you have to do is watch other dames and you'll get it. It's only a bloke in a frock. Did you not know? You didn't know, did you? Yeah, you didn't know. Ah, come on. Be honest. It's you, isn't it? It's yeah, me. Yeah. It is me. Yeah. Brilliant. I know. How exciting. This time last year, I was at the Heather's press night at the New Wimbledon Theatre. A week later, I got Heather's at the other palace, did that, and now I'm back at London Theatre doing panto. That's it's crazy. I know, it's crazy, it's crazy. Oh, Very exciting. I know, exactly. Did not plan for it to happen. Um, so I graduated in 2019, and then the obviously COVID came round like in March, just after. So I just started auditioning, was working part time everywhere, um, and then COVID happened. All of that stopped, obviously. Um, so then I got a job at Tesco and just was bored so <laughs> started making videos and I didn't think anyone would see them to be honest I was just doing it because my colleagues never had any clue what I was talking about <laughs> when I was talking about musical theatre and I just missed you know being around like-minded people and like relating to it in that way um, yeah and so that's kind of yeah I didn't plan it Yeah, yeah, it's it's a weird one because Instagram is kind of started introducing things that are very similar to TikTok, like reels and stuff like that, and then TikTok has started doing stories as well. I just kind of latching on to whatever I can, to be honest, and just posting, reposting my content, trying to keep things fun. I think I would still be, you know, going to auditions when they picked up again and trying my best, but obviously it's it's hard even just to get auditions nowadays, even, you know, for me now it's hard to get auditions and get in the room and get seen for things. I am indeed, yeah, playing Snow White. I've played Snow White, I've played Snow White before actually in Panto, but this was before I trained at LSMT. Um, so I was a bit of a novice so hopefully this time round I can really like get into it and I just love Christmas as well so. I'm ready for it I do get a bit of FOMO fear of missing out because I love being involved in all the little jokes but I feel like the whole company is so fun already, even just from today. Um, so we're just going to have laughs anyway, even if it's not, you know. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be fun. Oh, I don't know. I'd like to think that by now, you know, um, 
it's my talent that can help push me through to these through these auditions and into the jobs. Um, but I think it's definitely opened loads of doors for me in terms of working with brands and doing advertisement um, and things like that. So in terms of the followers, I'd love to you know keep growing that and keep um, you know showing them what theatre working in theatre is really like because a lot of the time you just watch the show and you think that's it. Um, so I definitely love to keep sharing kind of behind the scenes of it all. I love Blue Swimming, it's great, it's a lot of fun. Um, there's, as you can imagine, there's so many different characters and personalities and we all get on well, don't believe the hype. <laughs> don't believe the hype, yeah. They, they, they try to stir it up a bit, don't they? Oh, they, they always do, they always do. There's always a bust up apparently with somebody, but it's not true. It's not, well not, well, not as far as I'm concerned. I get on with everybody. That's why I'm the spirit of Panther. <laughs> She, she has been especially written for me because I'm bringing the joy and I'm bringing the self-belief and I'm bringing the positivity. That's what the spirit of Panto is. She is a goodie. Yes, yes, yes I am. I am the goodie. Um, the baddie's on that side and I'm on this side and I am going to prevail. <laughs> Well, I think there's a duet number. There might be a duet with me and Ruthie, so that would be quite nice. West, I'll, be, I'll be able to sing with some West End royalty. Um, oh, she's not drifting. She's steadfast. She's not crossing over to the dark side. If anything, I will convert Ruthie and she will come over to my way of thinking. That's the way it always happens. Very hard. I've worked very hard at my career um, and I've worked very hard to try and sustain a career and all I can say is that's down to good management you know I've got a good management team that work with me and I basically won't do anything if I don't enjoy it there's no point in doing something because you're entertaining people yeah but there's a lot of people who do things just for the money I don't do it for that's the last the last reason if I want to do it and I enjoy the production then I'll do it <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, yes. Yeah, lockdown got in the way. I got to meet Whoopi. The pandemic it hit a lot of people in a different, lot of different ways. So uh, I, I don't like to think that anybody's following in my heels or as, as such. I think there's space for everybody. Um, to you know, there's enough work for everybody. You just have to be proactive enough and find it. So uh, it's just not ready. You know, I, I it, two years before the pandemic, it would have been fine. I was a certain age. After the pandemic, I'm two, three years older, and you know, you're thinking about touring. That's a lot when when you've got I've, I've got a family that I want to be at home with more, and so um, you know, working nearer to home is my preference rather than touring everywhere. I love Lee, and I did I did Chicago with Lee recently before I broke my ankle in three places. But um, he's lovely. He's a lovely young man, and he's he's so he's got such a warm personality. So I think yeah, it's a good bit of casting having him as the prince. Of course he would. Who wouldn't? Who wouldn't want lovely Lee Mead serenading them? Yes. <laughs> I'm a newbie, I know, I'm a, I'm, compared to all of them I'm a newbie I think, um, I was speaking to Dick and Dom and I think they said they've done many, several, so that's, that's on her first one. oh alright, so I beat Ruthie, um, but I'm not far behind, uh, so, but the way that I look at it, Panto, the, the schedule is similar to doing a matinee show for a, uh, for a West End musical, which when you get to Christmas, they ram 
like 15 shows into 10 days so you know it's that's where they ramp it up at Christmas time so it's effectively that all the time but it's only four or five weeks it's a short short period of time four weeks of rehearsal and I think five weeks of of the show it's it's it's, a, it's not a lot it's not a lot to cram everything in so um, yeah I'm gonna start I'm starting learning these songs and um, I should be getting them <laughs> I I don't even I don't really know because I'm yet to, to start on my script, but I just think that I'm bringing the joy. The spirit of Panto is about joy, and you know, the spirit of Panto is a feeling. And so I just want everybody to leave there smiling. It's not, a lot of people, including myself, haven't maybe had a lot to smile about this year, but you've got to try and pick yourself up and dust your shoulders off and try to move on. And as much as, you know, there's a, a, an economical crisis situation going on, so times are hard for people, but I'm hoping that families will want to come out to just up, give themselves some uplifting moments of what's been a shocking year. No, 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 no. They're all fabulous. I've been very, very honoured. They are. Well, that's not a political answer. It's a very real one. How would you pick out of Motormouth, Motormouth and, and um, Mama Morton and Nettie Fowler from Carousel and the Killer Queen? How would you pick? I've been very fortunate, very privileged. I've got some, I've had some fantastic roles and they're equally for different reasons. I mean, I love the Killer Queen because her corsetry and her wigs were just fabulous. Those yeah. costumes were amazing. Fabulous. They were. I love Matron Mama Morton. She was my first role that I played out of X Factor into the West End. So I'm always going to have a soft spot for Chicago. Yeah. And with Hairspray, again, I'm going to have a soft spot for that because I could relate to Motormouth Maybell and the struggle that she was going through and just trying to bring communities together. So they're all three different roles and Nettie Fowler, I mean, I got to eat, uh, I got to eat Krispy Kreme donuts every single night. Yeah, it was, it was great. Um, and you know, and then I did Carmen Jones, where I got to drive a real Cadillac on stage every night. So I've, I've done very well. Well, I think I know where I've been is the is the, the best show, the best number for Motor Mouth, it's the Showstopper. That is the eleven o'clock number. Um, that gets everybody going and just brings the realisation back of life and in general to, to everybody. Yeah. But um, yeah, I love my verse in You Can't Stop the Beat. I stop the show with that one as well. well I love it. Stop the show whenever you can. Well, I try. I'll just stop There's the no show point in me I being hired say. if I can't do a certain job that I'm hired to do. And I hope that's my singing. So, you know, I've got, I enjoy singing. I, I find, I find, it, you know, it brings me great joy and it brings me great joy to look out and see someone enjoying my performance. That means a lot to me. Like, I, like I've said, I said to me many times, people could just have the job because they just think they're getting paid a certain amount of money. It's not about that for me. It's about the enjoyment and the fulfillment um, that I'm bringing to other people. It's going to be a good one, this one. Wimbledon is going to be the one to watch. I think it's going to be nicer and, and, and uh, you know, I think it's going to be a nicer one and better one than Palladium. Just saying so. Hashtag, we've got a fantastic hashtag, cast. Hashtag, this is the place to be. Hashtag, hashtag, hashtag this is my moment. <laughs> So now I do. <laughs> now you do indeed. Now I do. Yeah, that broke my heart. It really did. It broke my heart. I am um, just all these incredible young talent and hopefuls coming out into nothing, into a business that wasn't there. And they were also 
you know, training over Zoom. You cannot train over Zoom. No. You know, the world has, you know, post-COVID has got really lazy with Zoom. It's great to be able to have meetings with people when you can't, but an awful lot is now going online that shouldn't be going online. It feels great because it's my first panto, so therefore it's something I've not done before. And, you know, I think what will be fun about it is, you know, I'm from a world where you have to follow the script. And, and I think there's probably a little leeway to, to, you know, have fun with the script that you've been given. So, yeah, I mean, what a, what a hoot. I mean, the, the cast is just, well, it's, it's wonderful. And, um, you know, it's, it's what we do in England, you know, in, in Great Britain. We, we do panto. If you ask Americans about panto, they go, what? What's panto? Yeah. But it's, it's part of, it, it, it's what's British, is that we do pantomime at Christmas. Absolutely, and I've all and I always go to see it, but this will be the first time I've been in it. It's so lovely that my first uh, go in pantomime is such a wicked character. I have never even thought about pantomime. Um, it's just never really been on my radar. Uh, and and I don't think also I've only been asked a couple of times before to do it because I don't think people think of me for pantomime and uh, yeah so when this came through I thought do you know what it's Wimbledon which to me is the best of the pantomimes um, and let me try it on for size I think people need to realise that it's it's not a walk in the park because it's you know 12, 13 shows a week, so it's you're just literally you know on doing shows all Christmas. Um, but that's my idea of heaven. I, you know, I'm fine with that, especially as my children are now grown up. They're 17 and 19, so they can look after themselves, and I can come and enjoy Panto. Absolutely, and and really thrilled to get on a stage with her. We've got we've got we've got Chicago in common. Yes, you so, have. Yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, we're, we're we're West End, you know, mates if you know what I mean. So I, I've never worked with her properly before. But. I can't think of anything nicer. I'm totally up for it. I mean, you know, there's something quite lovely about um, doing something where you're happy to be booed. You know, the more you're booed, the better you feel you're doing. <laughs>